What is going on YouTube? It's your boy Malik at Malik's Water Garden and we're making a video about discus fish. Let's discuss discus. Okay, that's what the title is and essentially this video is going to cover um, what temperatures I keep my fish in and it's going to follow up on the last few videos I made about this topic. So a lot of the stuff here are going to be essentially follow ups and answering some of the questions uh, people had and also just how they're doing and um, just you know following up on them so if uh, you haven't subscribed please subscribe down below and hit that like button and hit that notification icon for further updates of this type of videos as well as similar content uh, and uh, stay tuned for more so let's get into this video so I was doing some research uh, about this topic uh, basically I, I like to find out as much information as I can about the environments, the animals that I keep living. So uh, I did a Google search actually last night. I'm um, gonna actually read some of the results I got. Uh, what I searched for was the average water temperature of the Amazon tributaries. Okay, this is Britannica, B R I T A N N I C A dot com, uh, and uh, it says Amazon River slash hydrology slash Britannica. So uh, Let's go and read what that says, which seems like a more in-depth analogy. I'll put that here as well so you can read what it says. So it goes on to re reading a lot of the hydrology details. I'm not going to read you all that. You can actually go check this out um, in the website. What I am going to read to you is uh, the parts that I thought was interesting. Uh, the climate. Okay? So this is from Britannica.com. The climate of the Amazonia is warm, rainy, and humid. The length of the day and night are equal on the equator, which is which runs a slightly north of the river. And the usual clear nights favor relative rapid ra radiation of the heat received from the sun during the 12-hour day, which means it cools down at night, okay, in layman's term. There is a greater difference between daytime and, mid and midnight temperature. Wow. Okay, so they, they actually did some research on this, more than just a momentary uh, snapshot. Uh, the, there is a greater difference between daytime and midnight temperatures than between the warmest and coolest months. Uh, so what it's basically saying is between the day and the night, it changed the, the difference is more than the difference between the warmer and the cooler months. So yeah, okay. Hence, nights can be considered the winters of the Amazon. So it does get cold at night. At Manaus, okay, the average daily temperature is in the upper 80s degrees Fahrenheit about 32 degrees Celsius in September and the mid 70s Fahrenheit about 24 degrees in April okay uh, but the humidity is consistently high and often op oppressive during the winter months of the southern hemisphere a powerful southern polar air mass occasionally drifts northwards into the Amazon region causing a sharp drop in temperature known locally as fridge damp so F R I A G E M, when the mer mercury may register into the 50s Fahrenheit, above for about 14 degrees Celsius, at any time of the year, several days of heavy rain can cause succeeding, uh, can be succeeded by clear sunny days and fresh cool nights with relatively low humidity in the low reaches of the river basin. Cooling trade winds below most blows most of the year. So. According to this, Britannica.com uh, and the hydrology report of the region, uh, basically it shows that the temperature can vary from uh, about 32 degrees, uh, this is outside uh, air temperature they're talking about, to, to about 24 degrees uh, Celsius uh, in, the, in the summer, in the daytime temperatures, okay? So we're not going to consider keeping our fish at nighttime temperatures because that's obviously a lot colder let's try to average this out 74 degrees is something these fish would regularly encounter in nature uh, especially during the day night cycle it definitely gets colder to that level uh, in the river and the next thing is um, during the summer and winter periods where it says it goes to about 24 degrees or mid 70s Fahrenheit so 24 degrees Celsius or mid 70s, so 75 to 78 degrees Fahrenheit during the days uh, in the months of April. Um, so, I mean, 
that means the fish does naturally live in a in a period where it does get to that temperature so it probably is healthy for these animals to experience some of that throughout the year uh, it's probably not healthy to keep them at 90 degrees all year round because that's not something these animals encounter all year round at that temperature especially because discus don't live in the main river they actually swim out into the channels into the tributaries into the flooded forest where they reproduce and all that stuff and i'm pretty sure the temperature out there uh, throughout the year fluctuates between uh, 70, 70 in the low low to mid 70s to the uh, high 80s so somewhere in that range is where you should be keeping your fish so keeping them at 80 degrees is definitely not a problem I uh, just want to add that really quickly into the video I hope somebody finds that information in, uh, informative and useful and uh, it will help I hope it helps uh, understand my logic behind what I do and uh, the method behind my madness at least. What's going on everybody? It's your boy Malik at Malik's Water Garden. Um, I'm actually doing a quick update to a video, several videos I posted uh, in the last year or two uh, regarding uh, the temperatures we keep our discus. So essentially this video is going to follow up on some of the points that was made by several people as well as uh, my personal thoughts on the whole topic on what temperature we should be keeping our discus fish at. Now here's the one thing I'm going to tell you before anything, okay? Discus fish are tropical fish, okay? And none of us are ichthyologists or ichthyobiologists. Most people you get information from about fish are other hobbyists or importers or breeders. So nobody has done any extensive research or scientific um, research towards these animals and what temperatures they should be kept in and what temperatures they are actually in in nature. So none of this information is actually available or research has been done. All we are going by is the word of other people. Uh, so I personally think that there's a lot of leeway and uh, problems when it comes down to it because for example um, I keep my discus between 78 and 82 degrees Fahrenheit 78 being the lowest and 82 being the highest the reason for that is because I believe that fish in nature do not live in temperatures that are exceeding 82 degrees of Fahrenheit in, in long-term scenarios there might be days where the temperature does exceed 82 degrees Fahrenheit for several hours during the day and there might be periods where the temperature does drop below 78 degrees Fahrenheit for several hours at night but aside from these extreme variables usually they do stay within a relatively stable range and I believe that range is between 78 and 82 degrees and one of the other reasons why I chose to keep fish between these two temperatures mainly is because many other fish that come from the exact same rivers as this this fish come from are some of the other fish I keep like corridors, like placos, fancy placos, uh, tetras and whatnot. Uh, and all of these other fish are more comfortable in a lower temperature than 84 degrees or 86 degrees where people are always telling you to keep your discus. So I personally think that the reason for this is because at somewhere along the line somebody kept them at 86 degrees and they acted really well for that person and uh, you know they survived so therefore that person or those same people, the breeders, whoever it is, original people that were keeping these fish originally said that this is the temperature you should be keeping them at and now everybody is like that's God's law apparently. So if you keep them at let's say 78 degrees, you're killing your fish. But my fish are obviously fine. You saw them at 78 degrees a few months ago. They are at 81 degrees right now. I moved them to this tank because the tank they were in was getting a little bit colder than 78. It was dropping down to 76, 75 degrees Fahrenheit even. And they were still showing no signs of distress. But for my personal comfort, not for the comfort of the fish, obviously, for my comfort, I brought them into this part of the room where it was a little bit warmer. So this tank is one of my warmer tanks and the temperature in here is about 81 degrees Fahrenheit. I'll check that right now. Oh, I'd say it's a little bit warmer right now. 82.6 or 82.4. There we go, 82. So um, it's quite warm in this tank. And as you can see, so many people that commented earlier that my fish were not showing colors and whatever. 
This fish is a wild cross. That's her natural color. So even at 82 degrees right now, she's showing the exact same color. The male was showing these colors in the other tank as well at 78 degrees. So there was no difference in the fish's color at a higher temperature. They're acting completely the same. There's no difference. They're eating fine. Uh, the only thing I have noticed is the, the rate at which they lay eggs. They do lay eggs at about every 10 days at this temperature as opposed to they were laying eggs maybe once every six weeks when they were at a lower temperature. So that was something I personally preferred at least to give them a period where they were not laying eggs every 10 days which probably is not healthy for the female fish. I mean I'm not trying to breed them if they do breed which they do which is fine but I'm not trying to get a clutch of eggs from this fish every 10 days. So that's something to consider as well. The warmer the temperature, the faster the fish's metabolism, the faster the reproductive cycle, the faster the animal is going to lay eggs. So it might wear out faster at a higher temperature. That's something to really consider. That's something a lot of people have not done any research on. So these are other things why I consider what, what, of what I consider personally to keep my fish at this temperature. Um, this is the warmest I would ever keep my discus fish at, which is 82 degrees Fahrenheit. Even this, I believe, is a little bit too warm, but right now there is no other tank I can move these two fish to. So that's why they're here, okay? So um, having said that, if you want to keep your fish at 90 degrees or even warmer, I personally don't have any problem with that. That's up to you. That's your fish. They're not in my care. They're not in my custody. If anything happens, that's also your, your, your problem at that point. Do not... Um, come back to me, you know, and if you bring the temperature down and something happens to your fish That's also not my fault because not every fish might not be able to handle lower temperatures For example, these fish were bred in Far East Asia. So they were kept in more Natural set settings as they were growing up as opposed to some of the fish that are bred here in North America or Europe that are kept indoors that are kept in a warmer condition all year round um, So these are the other things to consider Several things that you need to consider is that uh, one, they're in more natural conditions. The tanks are underpopulated, they're not heavily stocked, they're understocked. Um, the tanks don't have an extensive amount of equipment. There's a power head filter type of unit in the corner that pushes water for the plecos. There's a sponge filter in this one corner that's pushing out water and air. Um, and that's it. That's all there is. And I do a 50% water change once a week. And the nitrates in this tank is below 20 parts per million at any given time. Usually after the water change, it's about 8-9 parts per million. And it increases over time, uh, over the week, to about 90, uh, 15 to 20 parts per million. And uh, at that point, I do a 50% water change and it brings it down to about 8-9-10 parts per million. And, and depending on the actual nitrate level, I try to keep it uh, below... 20 parts per million throughout the whole week and under 10 parts per million after a water change. So that's what I do and therefore there is not really much that could go wrong in this setup. Do you know what I mean? Um, so these are things that I, I do personally to keep my fish. My fish, these fish are three years old now. Uh, you can go back and see them in my timeline, in my other YouTube videos. Uh, also you can see them in other tanks in the past, last winter living in a colder tanks. Uh, this winter, until like a few weeks ago, they were living in the colder side of the room. You can check these out. Um, so these are some of the things I do, and I, I fully believe that giving my fish a natural winter period allows them to actually live out a more longer uh, and healthier life. Uh, and I fully believe that that's one of the reasons why I rarely suffer any losses in my fish room, including my discus. I'm, I rarely lose fish, and, and, and I'm proud to say that. I'm really happy about this. I'm not saying I don't lose fish, I have so many fish in this room, so there is death every once in a while. So this is something, my personal uh, level of commitment towards my fish. And I know 100% I know everybody else does not have the same commitment towards their fish and animals. Now, these are things to consider. Discus are not hard fish. You can see these fish are very, uh, very healthy, they're doing really well, they're very friendly, they're very active. Um, they're showing very healthy signs of uh, life here. Um, and uh, they reproduce quite frequently for me. So these are things I do to keep them in this condition, which one of the things I believe is keeping them in a cooler temperature than what is recommended. Again, my knowledge is very limited based on my life work, lifelong experience with this animal, which is 
not that many years you know so um, accumulatively we don't know a lot about these animals accumulatively we don't know a lot about discus and discus care a lot of people feed discus beef heart um, something I always seem to think about every time I see that is that how would you see this animal which lives in a river there's no endemic cows living in South America why would this animal how would this animal get beef heart to eat how would that be natural how would that be normal does it look like it is a predator that is that is designed to eat meat? Like its mouth structure, its body structure, none of these things shows that it's designed to eat any type of meat product. Like it's a detritivore. It eats small amounts of detritus and micro crustaceans and other little bits of food. That's why it has a small stomach and a very small digestive tract. This is how big the, the fish's stomach is. This, The fish might be this big, but if this is the mouth, if if the anal glands, if the anus is right there, their digestive tract is like that. That's how small of a digestive area this fish has, which is why a lot of people have a hard time keeping them alive because, uh, first of all, they need to eat constantly, especially younger ones that are growing out. You have to feed them several times a day, uh, small amounts of food, uh, and they graze. They're grazer. They're not a, a predatory fish. So you, this whole concept of feeding discus beef heart and Discus breeders swear by beef heart without realizing the long-term ramifications this might have on your fish. I'm not hating on feeding your discus beef heart. I'm pretty sure I have some products that have a little bit of beef heart in them. But that is not the only thing I feed them. I try to feed them predominantly foods that have fish proteins and bug proteins. Um, and also other things that are uh, healthy for them. For example, I find these fish eating my Playco chips which have uh, spirulina. If it's a predator, why would it be eating spirulina? It's not a predator. But every single time, 9 out of 10 times, if you talk to a breeder, they'll tell you they're feeding their discus uh, beef heart mix and other types of proteins that are unnatural for the fish. So the, my conclusion from all of this is that just because somebody's successful at keeping and breeding a fish does not mean they know everything there, they, there is to know about that fish and does not mean they know what is best for that fish. Sometimes a breeder might do things to just to get the to to get the fish to spawn. Uh, might not be the healthiest thing for the animal. Does that ever come into my your consideration? Like for example, when somebody says, "Hey, like bring the temperature up to 90 degrees to spawn your zebra flecos," do you ever consider that that might not be healthy for the internal organs of that animal? The information available is very limited. Like so. Therefore, when somebody tells you, oh, I keep my discus at this temperature, that's right for them, not right for everybody. And it's not uh, a God-sent rule that you have to, this is the temperature they live at and anything below it. Somebody, I mean, the amount of messages I got, the last video I posted, uh, one person told me, below, seven, below 80 degrees, discus would not eat. So I asked him, then do you think my fish are starving for the last 8 months or 6 months when the temperature dropped below 80 degrees and it was 80, 79 or 78? Uh, another person said they, they cannot breathe below 80 degrees Fahrenheit. Bonkers! Bonkers! How can you tell me an animal just stops breathing at a certain temperature? Like, does it have a temperature gauge on its body saying, no, uh, anim fish are ectothermic okay which means they depend on the environment for their heat so they are the temperature that the environment is in okay so they cannot generate their own heat which is let me actually check that word ectothermic is an organism in which internal physiological sources of heat are of relatively small or quite negligible importance in controlling body temperature such organisms rely on environmental heat sources which permit them to operate at very economical metabo metabolic rates. So, having said that, the animal depends on the fish tank temperature to warm up its body. So therefore, all of your tropical fish require to be in tropical water. Now, tropical does not mean 90 degrees Fahrenheit. Tropical does not mean 86 degrees Fahrenheit. Tropical means anywhere from 74 degrees Fahrenheit to about 85 degrees Fahrenheit. And, and when a fish collector goes into these environments in the middle of the afternoon and checks the temperature and says, hey, this animal lives at 86 degrees, 
No, it doesn't. You check the surface of a two meter river, the top layer of the water, or two meter deep, or three meter deep lake, or in an area where it's three meters deep, and you check the top, and you say it's 86 degrees or 87 degrees at two o'clock in the afternoon. First of all, it's in the middle of the day, and you check the top of the water. Water temperature in the bottom where the fish live are much, 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 much colder. If you've ever been swimming into a tropical country and swam in a lake, you would know this. You, if you, the, 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 the lower you go in the water column, the colder the water is. Uh, so having said all that, I do not expect anybody to change the temperature they keep their discus at. This is a personal thing. Uh, although I do recommend uh, considering that you are keeping a live animal and the comfort of the animal should be also considered and the long-term well-being. Uh, which is why I keep my fish at the temperature I keep them at. Now it does not mean you need to do that, does not mean I'm telling you to do that, does not mean uh, I am a, a fish police and, uh, and or I know all or be all about these fish. All I'm saying is I've been keeping fish since I was three years old. I've had fi discus fish since I was about 10 years old. Uh, I've seen them my whole life and I'm quite experienced with this type of fish uh, and uh, quite successfully have been keeping them alive for the last 36 years. So that's all I'm saying. So in my 36 years of experience of fish keeping, what I've learned is that I keep my discus at 78 to 82 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, now, at some points the temperature does drop a little bit below 78 degrees in tanks that I have them on and I'm not worried about it unless it's a long term thing where the temperature might stay dropped for let's say 3-4 weeks at which point I would do something or uh, in the case of this tank for example the temperature might go above 82 degrees a degree or a half a degree more every once in a while and I'm not concerned about that I either. Uh, what I'm concerned about is overall where is the temperature like is it always 88 degrees or 86 degrees Fahrenheit where the fish is at always fired up and its metabolism is at full drive or is it always at 74 degrees or 72 degrees where the fish is constantly not in a temperature where it's not supposed to be at um, so as long as I can keep them within 78 to 82 degrees Fahrenheit I'm very happy they're happy uh, they seem to be doing fine and uh, also what I am doing right now is I'm monitoring these fish over the next few years uh, to see if this is making any difference in their life and their lifespan uh, because I want to make sure that the, the fish I keep are living a full natural life um, and, uh, and living a full natural and healthy life and reproducing throughout their entire lives without having internal issues or dying uh, unforeseen deaths or sudden deaths because of uh, organ failure. So these are some of the things I consider. Uh, this is what I do. I don't expect anybody else to do it, uh, but I hope you learned something from this. Uh, if you did, please like below. If you didn't, please dislike. Uh, please comment below and let me know what temperatures you keep your disc at. And also please uh, subscribe down below if you haven't and hit that notification icon for similar content. And also, stay, stay tuned for the series of this, uh, Discus Fish, uh, How to Care, and uh, Temperature Guide, whatever, on uh, keeping them, on how I keep them, as well as uh, why you should not get a Pleco before watching these videos. I'm making a series about that. So, there's actually the first installment there. You'll see a link to that at the end of this video. So, check that out. As well, the next one is coming out right after this. So subscribe and uh, hit the notification icon so you get updated when that type of videos get uploaded as always i thank you for your support uh inspire lead motivate that's what it says on the back of my ipad it says that in my name uh so that's what this channel is about and uh also conservation and education that's what i believe in conserving animals and educating people on how to take care of animals so if that's what you're about well, I thank you for your support. If you're not about that, I hope that's something you can uh, learn to become about or start developing. And uh, as always, I love you all. See you guys in the next video. God bless.